Good evening. Welcome to the Billy Jones Show, a sports and fantasy sports show. It's Tuesday, April 16th, and I'm your host, Billy Jones. I'm the type of hockey fan who watches the regular season, none of it, absolutely none of it. But I love to binge the playoffs because the electricity and the atmosphere is just a completely different game in my mind. Um, So to get acclimated for the playoffs, I brought on someone who uh, has been covering hockey all season. He does um, betting and fantasy. DJ Mitchell, one of the uh, premier people in terms of uh, underdog fantasy, uh, both pickums and best ball. I'm really excited to chat it up with him today. So um, going to be a great guest and a great show. Let's get going. What's up, DJ? Nothing. Just checking the hockey bets, as you kind of mentioned. <laughs> it's it's yeah. every night. It's every night. It is. I mean, I watch and gamble on hockey every single night, and people are just like, mm-hmm. how do you do it? And I'm like, I, I really do think it, it is funny because I have so many friends, too, when the playoffs come around. They start, I start getting the text, like, what's the bet tonight? And I'm like, you never watch a single game all year long. But I totally get it. Like, the playoffs in hockey are a different breed. It is mm-hmm. players that have torn it, like, you know, torn ligaments that are just like, I'm playing tonight. I don't care. Um, it's gladiator stuff. It's fun. And without a team to root for in 13 years in Buffalo, I adopted the Winnipeg Jets this year. So I get to be sad nice. with a different market that's just like mine. So I'm just, I'm just super excited. The Zamboni is the best contest. Uh, underdog is the best way to play fantasy. I don't even really do home leagues anymore. I think it's just like, what's the point? There's an actual like they optimize the way of doing things. Why am I going to play? Like, I'm not going to be a GM of a hockey team. Like, let me just try to win money. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm a baseball guy. And so I understand the the drag of a longer season. And then when it picks up in the playoffs, it's just a different game that you can play because in baseball, you can burn your arms out really quickly. So you go 110% in the playoffs and in hockey, if they play to the intensity that they do in the playoffs, everyone would be dead. <laughs> so it's, uh, as you said, um, you cover a lot of, you watch hockey every single night. I started following you because of the underdog, um, yearly season long contest this past year as i was getting interested and i love the the niche stuff and you have a podcast with moods that covers that which i love and i watched love getting in those um but you actually do a whole lot more than that so what exactly just give a little bit of your background before we jump sure. into the tournament yeah i mean it's again I, I think the way i've always looked at betting is probably how a lot of the the people talk about it where it's like there's this puzzle that I want to solve and it feels unsolvable, which makes it more interesting. That's why you get a lot of people that come from poker. They come from those different backgrounds where it's like, I'm trying to solve this game. How do I solve it? And me and Matt got started when we were juniors in college, uh, really getting in. Actually, I mean, sophomores when we really started playing DFS junior year, we were really, really, really getting into it and having some success before it got difficult. And now part of the reason I got away from it, it's just almost too difficult now to win, but we started doing a podcast uh, the betting stuff, as it kind of came along, I got more and more into it. Pat Mayo reached out to us. We did some stuff with him back when he had hockey on his um, service. But we kind of linked up with more of just like the model-based stuff and trying to get more into simulating and trying to figure out. And, and honestly, like I don't give myself a ton of credit on that. Like Jay, my partner on Puck Luck, he is mm-hmm. the mastermind. He is absolutely unbelievable with coding and getting that stuff together. It's a lot of brainstorming and ideas and trying to generate like what we think is important and how to get there because again it feels more solvable than other sports just because the correlations are so incredibly strong as well which again kind of all these different facets all these different outlets like how do we make a product that covers all of it in a sport that people don't care about as much and to me i find that the best especially if you're someone that doesn't follow hockey regularly maybe just a little bit and you love playing best ball like trying out hockey, I think there's just such a massive edge compared to football where it's largely, yeah, I don't even want to say, and again, not solve, solves the wrong word. It's just so much more difficult to outcompete the amount of people that are playing. 
Whereas in hockey, you're really not competing against that many people that are max drafting, nor are you competing against people that are taking it seriously. Like people are just throwing in completely blind bullets in all these contests. Um, so yeah, I mean, all, like all of it's math driven, all of it's model driven. If you ever want to bet with me and you ever have a question about why I bet something, I will send you the exact math. Like we run our own lines. So if like a player point for a player goal, for example, so, something super easy, Kyle Connor tonight, we're in his Jersey. He scored. Mm -hmm. If I was going to bet him to score, I always check. And we have our own line generated based on the model saying, this is the odds to score. This is the percentage we have for him to score. So that's the number. Is it a good edge or is it a bad edge? Mm -hmm. And that's how we bet everything. Same with shots on goal. Same with player props. Same with saves. It all kind of does that. So we look at it differently. It's not perfect, obviously, because you can only control so much. But I think that we have the best product on the market and really one of the, the only products on the market when it comes to that stuff. So, yeah, it's kind of like evolved over time. And again, it's always just a thirst to try to solve something that's unsolvable in a sport that I love, which I feel like is probably somewhat similar to what you're doing, I, I assume. Yeah. And so I like I like a bunch of different sports. And you said foot, I first got into best ball because of football, because fantasy football is the biggest beast. Yeah. But um, as you said, it's also pretty solved, not solved, but it's there's so much content. There's so much knowledge in that space. I love to poke the other areas, which are a little more niche, that just the basics aren't necessarily known by everyone. So you could we are yeah. in dms with moods about like arguing three versus four centers and like we're like splitting hairs about like should the last guy be a center or can you do it someone else literally your last pick being stupid or not when like you watch in these drafts you see people doing six centers i'm like oh well we're like we're yeah. splitting hairs here and a lot of people don't even have a clue so um i think that there's still yeah. lots of yeah here. and i love that you um are leveraging like data modeling with acumen of the sport to be able to be like, okay, these, 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 we have our independent numbers. Does it also make sense from a logic perspective? And that's where you get this, like you get this really good ROI. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I mean, again, like, I think, I think the one thing that get, yeah, gets lost, it's not just watching the game versus numbers. To me, I think the one thing that gets lost in, in hockey and I don't know as much in baseball, but I can imagine is that like, people either don't rely on raw numbers and like exactly what's happening in like a small data size. Like again, I pull the five games all the time to double check stuff because things change quickly and it gets the same with baseball. Like imagine if you had a guy that was batting eighth goes up to second in hockey, we have guys that go from the fourth line to the first line in the first power play. And it's really hard to capture that quickly when you're trying to gather as much data as possible. So like there's a lot of different factors that go into the bets as well. I don't want to say it's a hundred percent, but all of that as well can go into how you're drafting for the playoffs. What's happening right now? What, what was happening before? And like, I think that that's like, again, that, that's what keeps you interested. That's what keeps you going. And when it comes to the playoff, the, the Zamboni, everything you're saying is like why I'm so interested in it and why it's also so easy to win and not just maybe win. I mean, obviously winning the whole prize is going to be very difficult, but to make your money back. I mean, I, I mean, again, like the easiest example, I did one show with Pete last year. Pete drafted one team. And he advanced and it wasn't even that good of a team. It wasn't, I mean, like it just isn't that difficult. Like you're going to advance at a pretty good rate. If you just are drafting with any idea of what you're doing. Um, so I think it's, I think it's definitely the, the, the most fun sport to get involved with. So mm -hmm. if you're not involved with hockey at all, number one, the playoffs is the best avenue to start. And number two, this is the best contest because there's a ton of upside and there's really not that much you need to know. Um, and we're, I'm going to get to that a lot tomorrow with because uh, we're doing a show with uh, the Badge Bros and Pete. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk to people that really don't know what they're talking about. Not the Badge yeah. Bros, but Pete. Yeah, for sure. Well, we got a little bit in the chat where yeah. Chip with Blind Bullets last year came in second, apparently, um, and loved that. And we see him. He loves doesn't know shit about hockey, but he loves a draft, and that's where we're at too. Um, but so let's go ahead and talk about the tournament a little bit. Um, start with the basics. Um, so – Zamboni is a tournament on Underdog Fantasy, $10 per, per entry, 150 entries. So can get some volume in there um, for not a decent, um, not that expensive either. And you can, and there's only 11,000 entrants. So if you aren't going to max it, you still don't feel like you're going to be 100,000 entries, kind of just priced out of it in some fashion. Um, as you can see here, the advancement in the round one is two out of six. Round two is one out of eight. Um, round three, which is the conference championships, one out of five, and a 93-person final. 
Um, the hardest round of the tournament is going to be the second round, which is one out of eight. I think that is noteworthy that not playing for round one, um, but playing for round two is going to be pretty important. So once um, DJ and I were talking before the show, but the playoff matchups will be known um, potentially within the hour, potentially in the next day or so. Once that is known, you should really kind of think about the tr not trying to cancel out a lot of your team in the first round. Um, we're going we're gonna to basically, we're going to know the East probably entirely within an hour, I, I believe. Um, mm -hmm. Because, I mean, again, like, it's crazy. It seems like almost everything's locked up in the East, and now Boston's losing and Florida's only down by one. And it's like, oh, my God, is it going to be Boston-Toronto in the first round? But, but again, I guess we'll get to it. But we, mm -hmm. we do know, at the very least, we know which four teams are going to be on the Atlantic and which four teams are going to be on the Metro side and, other than the, the last wild card right now. So mm -hmm. the East is pretty much there. The West, a little bit, a little bit janky, but we'll get into it. Yeah, so once those are known, we should definitely be leveraging that as a part of our drafting. Um, and then in the finals, there's a 93-person final. So in the finals, you're guaranteed 100 bucks. So 10 entries, you're going to get your money back with a top prize of $10,000. Um, roster construction, I want to jump to that. It's one wing, one goalie, one defenseman, one center, two bench, no, two flex, and six bench. So it's a total of 12 players. Um, it's a little different than the elders, which you kind of have to do other contests on underdog, which you have to do two in the wing, um, slightly different. I think I like it a little bit better because it gives a little bit more priority to the center position, which is the most powerful or most high scoring. Um, that's like the real basics. Is there anything DJ that you think I should highlight before we jump over to like the, the current odds? No, I mean, I, think, I mean, I, I just think it's just, again, don't get in the trap. Like, we talk so, so much about roster construction for the regular season. And I drafted like 145 of, of 150 that were the 3-7-3-3. Three, 3-7-3-3. Seven, three, three. Three, seven, three, three. Yeah. And in the playoffs, don't worry about it. Like, it, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously have a little bit in mind, but you don't need to be. Like, every one of my drafts, I'm not going in with any sort of uh, definite construction. Just try to fill it out as best you can. And with the stacks, but yeah, I just, again, that's really the note. Um, don't be afraid to take that Latin that, that center because you have two flex. It doesn't matter where it comes from. Yeah. And so that's the actual opposite. It's the roster construction matters, but it's the opposite here. So yeah, you and the, the season long tournaments were really three, seven, three, three was the standard. It's the base. It's the best here. All we care about from a roster construction perspective is being able to fill out a final. So we want, we have to have six people playing in a final matchup. Um, that can come from three, 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 and three on two different teams. It can come with four and two. It can come with whatever, but you need to have a live team. Um, so let's take a look at the current um, betting odds to make to win the conference. So that would be getting us to a team in the finals. This is the East, um, and below that is this the the way that the stacks line up. We'll start off with the top. Um, there is a I'd say like. Uh, a couple of primary favorites, Hurricanes being the number one, but also very closely followed by the Rangers and the Panthers. Um, what are your thoughts at the top of the Eastern Conference? Yeah, I, I mean, I really don't care. Like, like personally, it doesn't bother me at all because every single year we are shocked and surprised. Last year, the best team in NHL history by regular season record lost in the first round in Boston. Three years mm -hmm. before that, the best team in NHL history, record-wise, Tampa got swept in the first round by the Columbus Blue Jackets. I mean, it's just like, obviously it matters a little bit, and it does show up in the drafting, but I'm not ultra-specific. Like, I'm never going into a draft, but again, coming from a, a place of privilege and drafting as many teams as I do, but I never come into a draft thinking, well, I'm definitely taking Hurricanes, and I'm definitely taking Edmonton. Because if you come in with that mindset, you're probably going to get bullied into taking something that has no chance of winning. So just be open to all of these teams in some capacity. And in reality, these odds are not that crazy. Like it's, it's substantial enough to maybe draw a bit of a conclusion, but not to an insane degree, um, which is why I don't mind going with a, like the upside team in Toronto uh, at, you know, seven to one, right. Instead of taking a much lower upside team in the hurricanes, like I'll take the hurricanes, but not going to be overstacking them to the same degree because when the hurricanes win 
it's not going to look the same as when Toronto wins. So it mm -hmm. doesn't really get into my drafting as much as it, again, it's just sort of like, well, you know, it's in mind, but I'm more focused on trying to make sure I'm getting as many players who have potential Western Easter conference final and finals in the drafting window that I'm in um, rather than saying like, I have a, you know, a really big lean based on, on these pretty difficult odds. Yeah. And then what, there's a couple of things that stood out to me. So the NBA odds, and because it's a very almost identical contests, but for different sports, and the 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 Celtics are way up there, and they you see that in their ADPs, whereas you don't really see that the the odds directly aligning with the ADPs here. I mean, the Panther, the Florida Panthers are the third favorite, second favorite, depending on how you look at it, and you could very easily get that whole team if you want to with their first guy going off in the third round. So, um, interesting point there. Um, want to take a look at the Western Conference. Um, any teams stand out here that you particularly like or any any takes? I mean, I'm rooting for Winnipeg and I bet them preseason, but I'm not getting I'm not gonna be crazy. I mean, my I, my personal thought is that the Oilers are the best team in the NHL. Um, it, you know, but again, it is relying on goaltending. I do think they're the most complete team because of the upside in McDavid that they have and it's just he's another level. I mean, I think especially I think it stands out to people that don't watch regularly. So if again, if you're new to watching hockey and you want to root for someone, I would just jump on the Oilers bandwagon myself because you're going to be watching an alien and Connor McDavid. Um, I think the, the, <laughs> public, the public is all over the stars right now. And I think people are starting to sour on the avalanche, especially after kind of just coming out super flat late in the year and the goaltending being a disaster. But again, like every one of these teams in the West, it feels like any of them can win and any of them can lose based on goaltending. Like even if you go to the bottom and you look at the Predators and UC Soros, like this is one of the best goalies in the world. Could mm -hmm. they beat if they end up getting matched up with, which right now is Vancouver? Well, obviously look at the odds. It's not that crazy. But what if he just continues to get hot? I mean, we've seen it so many times. What about, I mean, Winnipeg, the case is goaltending. And then on the other end with all the top end teams, it's the opposite because the Avalanche have been super bad in that. Uh, Oilers super streaky in that. I mean, it's just like, it's what which version of Stuart Skinner are you getting? Are they going to have to go to Kelvin Pickard? You know, this has been a terrible year for Jake Ottinger. Does he figure it out in the playoffs again? And then you know, it, it's like is Vegas the complete team that's coming together? Like it feels like in it feels like both conferences are wide open, which is why I mm -hmm. I love it for drafting because I'm just not connected super strongly to one team and i said the same thing last year i'm like boston is the best team in the league i'm gonna draft them a little bit but i'm gonna be way underweight because i just am not paying these prices to get you know bullied into losing out on most of the stack if i you know you take posture knock well there goes your goaltender there goes your defenseman there goes marshan uh i guess i take pavel zaka now like <laughs> Again, not like, ideal and, and and last year the, the reason i had success and albeit it fell apart was because I drafted way more Florida than the field. It fell apart in the finals because I had not enough Vegas. But, like, just don't – yeah, I, I think the number one thing is if you're drafting a few teams and you're drafting a million, just be open to what the draft is offering you and let other mm -hmm. people make those mistakes. Like, the best draft you could possibly get into is one where in the first round someone takes McKinnon, someone takes Rantanen, and someone else takes McCarr. That is the best-case scenario for you. Because now three people are going to try to be getting Casey Middlestad, and you can go right ahead and take Kucherov, et cetera. And you need to have a good team in the second round or you're not mm -hmm. making it. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, my feeling, I, I am very wide open. And I think the maybe the more of a hockey fan you are, the less, I don't know if it matters. Just like have an open mind and do not, and look, I mean, realize that 20% and 11%, it's not that big of a difference. Like don't don't get bogged down in it. Yeah, and there's no there's no fifty percent odds here. There's no uh, negative like minus money here. So um, I think that's a really good point. Just kind of get multiple options in your draft and be flexible. Don't don't tie yourself to the the chalk. Um, before we jump into a draft, I want to take a look at these stacks here. Is there anything from your experience that you've done so far that you've walked yourself into a position where the stack looks pretty ugly. Like you missed on a couple pieces and you thought that, uh, that there's like a piece that you had to have. One that stood out to me was 
The Rangers, if you miss Adam Fox, like at the defensive yeah. position, you got to go wait all the way to Truba, and Truba's not the same player. So, um, any any noteworthy things like that? Yeah, I mean, Fox and Truba are, are interesting. To actually, like a really interesting debate because Truba offers a really really good floor. So while Fox obviously has the upside, his floor is pretty low normally. It's been a lot better as of late. So it, you know, really, I do think his ADP is correct now. Um, but that is honestly a super interesting one because if you missed Fox because you were getting another top end defenseman, like I think a lot of people could end up with like a Bouchard in that situation or even a Miro. I think you're okay to still take Truba for sure because if he's back at full health, he is going to have the most hits in the playoffs probably right up there mm-hmm. with the best of them, especially if they're advancing. I mean, I know uh, Lausanne for Nashville set the NHL record in hits, but let's just assume they don't go on as far as the Rangers, especially when you're drafting Rangers. So you do get a good floor on him. Um, I, I mean, I don't know if there's any, I mean, really at the end of the day, it just comes down to if you're stacking two teams heavily, you need to have the goalies. Like, I don't mm-hmm. really worry. Like, there, I mean, there's the, I think the most important ones are kind of like, the, it depends on the team, right? I mean, if like you're not getting the it's interesting about the goalies, goalies though, yeah. Right, because you typically don't care at all about goalie stacking goalies. But no. in this format, you're making the bet on the team to make the finals or make a really yeah. deep run. So that goalie is a part of your offense succeeding well. Um, yeah. yeah. And I mean, and I do think people have taken a, a bad, oh, I don't even know what the right word is. Uh, they've taken a bad lesson from the past two years because the past two years we've had goalies win that didn't start the Stanley Cup for their team. Uh, Kemper got injured and last year Aiden Hill came in for, I mean, it was like, who's their goalie. And we got to like the third option and Aiden Hill, you know what I mean? So I doubt that happens. That seems pretty rare. Like it seems like that should have been way less than it has in obviously the past, you know, even five to 10 years. Uh, And I think it only happened twice. So I I would not learn that lesson. Um, I would definitely say like, like, again, I've had people, and, and including Matt. I mean, Matt's super smart. I'm not trying to say he's not, but he's been like, I'm not that interested in making sure I get Stuart Skinner. Like, what if they go to Calvin Pickard? And I'm like, well, if they're going to Calvin Pickard, it's probably dire straits there. Like, that's not a yeah. good that's not a good look for your Oilers bet. I mean, it, maybe it's a little bit helpful that they're losing and they're getting more games out of McDavid, but, like, at some point, that's, that's not good. Your team is not normally surviving when they're going to a goalie for non-injury reasons, so – yeah, I mean, and again, I, I've also mentioned this many times where I've taken, you know, like a like a you know perfect example would be like a Toronto, and I don't take Samsonov, and I've taken like Hellebuck and Demko, just because number one, those teams are really cheap, they're largely goalie driven. I mean, and shooting percentage, but you know, I think Vancouver's obviously has some guys that can score, but they're largely goalie driven to get there. They both could get to the conference final together. But the goalies would absolutely carry you in that scenario, right? I mean, they're going to have monstrous games. So I'm okay with that as well. But as long as you're getting, you know, the, the Matt theory of a 4 4 2 2, and you're including at least one of those goalies in your fours, or if you are doing a five man, that should be a goalie. Like, like uh, your you core needs to be. include your goalie. Yeah, you at least away. one of your core, at least because they get to the, if, if neither of your cores get to the finals, then you have a 2 2 and you're losing. I mean, mm-hmm. you're not winning. You know what I mean? So, oh, you have two goalies in the final. One scores anyways. You know what I mean? So you've already lost and you have what, 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 we have two goalies to score from to lose. Congratulations. Like you you might, you have to make sure one of those cores has a goalie. Um, and in reality, once you get to like the fourth round, ADP largely gets thrown out the window for me. Like it's a little bit important. You know, don't take a guy 65 ADP at 30 if the guy you need is 32. But like, if you needed a guy in your stack and he's 41 and no one else before then, just take that guy. You know what I mean? Like make sure you get that goalie because someone could be auto drafting or someone could literally be not know what they're doing. I've been in many lobbies where someone takes six different teams worth of players. Like they don't know what they're doing and that's a good for you, but don't let it screw you. Let it screw everyone else. Yeah, I like that. I always watch the draft board, and if there's someone who's auto drafting, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have yeah. to deal with that. Or on the flip side, if I see someone who's very particular about their stacking, I'm like, there's an opportunity to throw someone around the board if they haven't picked them yet. Let's go ahead and jump into a draft. Um, this will be my first. I'm going to throw fire some couple after this. Um, wanted to do my first one with an expert. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. I mean, I, I do feel like, again, like almost with everything I do, and if you follow me for betting as well, you'll notice that like I'm betting a lot of things that 
might happen together or not at all. And that is definitely how everything, right? I mean, I'm not building for, you know, for, for ninth place. Like I'm building for first in everything I do. I am trying to win thousands. I'm not trying to win a couple dollars. Um, so yeah, from the start to now, Dick David and, and um, Kid and Flop, which I said would definitely happen over time. I, I mean, again, I don't have a fault in either of them, but I definitely lean McDavid. I've always leaned Edmonton. So yeah, there's really no doubt in my mind. It's gotten a little bit easier to stack Edmonton over time as well, just for whatever reason. They, they've only softened. Um, and I, I have actually seen, as of late, a couple mcdavid drys little teams slipping through, which, of course, is is very good. Um, mm -hmm. So I do think, and it, yes. it, I don't really get why, but it just it's, it's happening. Yeah, so it's the I don't know what the phenomenon is. It's the but it, it we're, we're definitely going to do that. We love the influencer 101. So you're saying McDavid is the play off the top? Yeah. I think? Okay. I I think so. I mean, it, again, like the reason really is because I don't think there's a dramatic difference between McDavid and McKinnon, and you can get McKinnon second every time pretty much like it's like what's the point you know what i mean and if you're drafting 150 and you really want to spread exposures well at later on you can take that mckinnon but uh, they're both monstrous upsides mckinnon shoots more but i mean mcdavid's the fourth player in nhl history to have 100 assists for a reason and still you know had like 30 goals so um it's it's unbelievable what he can do and he lifts everyone around him so every player you're stacking with him if he's doing the job he needs to do for you to win they're all getting lifted as I'm kind of alluding to. And just like, yeah. what, a, what a treat. I mean, like what, a, how lucky are we to have him to watch? Like it's, it's insane. Like it really is out of this world. He is like the, as yeah. a the baseball guy, I am. It's the Acuna is the best player in the world and he gets to play for my Atlanta Braves. So I'm like super, like, I love that. I get the opportunity to watch that. And McDavid's the same way. He is just the best player in the world. He has been the best player in the world for a while, and he just – he's different. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. I mean, it, so there's this first yeah, round so about what you see, Matty Kachuk going early. Wow. What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he was the 3-4 guy at the beginning of this. And, like, Florida's just here. Like, it used to be, like, you're praying to get – the Chuck Reinhardt um, to start. And now it's completely free to get, you know, even in the, you know, and that guy's going to do it here. I mean, I, there's no, it's not necessary, but I don't really have a problem with it. Like if that's how you want to build, um, you're going to get unique that way. Like it's kind of that NFL mentality of like unique combinations. Although this is what was happening early on in the window. So it's not that unique to me. Like that's what people were doing was like the five, six, the five, the, the first round there. there. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I you know I take Hyman here. I don't really think that's all that necessary. Like you could have gone with a Carolina stack on the other side, but yeah, I think you just. I mean, that, this is what I would do. I would just take Hyman Bouchard. We already missed Aho, so I think Carolina is probably unnecessary. Mm. Like that's an interesting you, you point. Can, yeah, if Aho the if reason, Aho was there, I would have considered it because it would have been a bit unique now. Because Aho the reason really far. Yeah, the reason. I like this Edmonton here, right? Just, you have unbelievable flexibility to do whatever you want, right? The you get a center wing defenseman. Um, so I feel like I'm pretty comfortable. I'm only having to compete against one other Edmonton team here in this dry sidle team. Um, and now that they've taken Cher Sterkin, which is the hardest name to say. <laughs> yeah. um, wow. And did I even say it correctly? Um, uh it's just Sturkin. I mean, yeah. You, just you, 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 I feel like you said it more probably Russian accurate. Like you really said it like a like a, like I would say it in Russia. Like the Americanized version is just Sturkin. You you really added a lot of good enunciation, I think. Well, I'll, I'll take that. Um, now that he's taken, that's gone there um, to that Edmonton drafter. I feel like we're going to be able to get Skinner on our team as well. Yeah, yeah, and I I think it's I mean it's the play. I I would be. Very, very surprised if his leash wasn't at least pretty long in the playoffs. Like Calvin Pickard has absolutely never been useful. They had no interest in him being useful. And that just goes to show you how bad Campbell was. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, I mean, and Georgia falls pretty far. I mean, again, like it, the, the movement's been pretty crazy. Like Kucherov used to be a fifth, sixth round guy 
Georgiev used to be an absolute third round, 100%. Um, yeah, so now we're not too nervous. Uh, it, it's probably start to start to think about what we're going to do on the other side of the of the lobby. Um, I think the the best case scenario is, yeah, I mean, you could stick. I mean, it really is. It, it is interesting. I mean, yeah, we have time here to think. So just looking at the playoff picture, mm -hmm. pull it back up again. It's like, do you want Edmonton to go? Is, go ahead. No, Edmonton's almost definitely going to be playing LA or potentially Vegas. So you kind of want to stay away from them. Vancouver and it looks like Nashville are going to be the other, you know, guys in that mix. You can take a look at a team like because this whole window right here, it's kind of tough to like. I don't know. I mean, I I personally, I don't mind going down the board a little bit, but this is tough, man. Yeah, I feel like I would think I, I definitely like I, want to go in the opposite conference. Yeah, you got ten seconds. Where are you thinking? Take Fox. Take Fox because if you take Fox, we can still get Zabanajad and Kreider. Like, I'm not that nervous about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're kind of screwing the Rangers guy, but I don't really worry about it. We're not getting that goalie, but there's so many. Like, I think this is a good one to honestly like just queue up, you know, your hella buck and just say that we're gonna ride Winnipeg. And I think the added benefit of riding Winnipeg in a McDavid draft is that you're kind of saying Colorado fails, which means two teams in the first round. I mean, you're like, you know, I, I guess it doesn't matter a ton for the future of because a lot of those teams won't make it, but you're kind of looking at that's kind of how I would do it. So I would think Winnipeg is definitely going to be on the other side of the bracket. The Stars and Colorado and Vegas are getting nabbed up, so no one's really going to go there. You can probably wait on those guys. You're going to get two goalies in the West, but you only need one goalie in the finals. And at this point, you've already hitched your wagon to Edmonton winning it, which, again, I think is my favorite. Um, you also you, – there's not a ton of centers to worry about. McDavid's going to score for you a lot. And you already got Zibanejad coming, but, like, you you don't have to yet. You, you could tether yourself to Shifley or – I mean, I think it's Shifley or Tafoli. Ehlers has kind of lost his role, sadly. I mean, I love the guy, but he's he might be dust at this point. Um, but mm -hmm. this way you don't have to go straight league. He could be like the absolute last pick if necessary, but you have two centers for sure. Now um, McDavid's going to be the guy you want to score the most. I know Zabanej has not been great this year, but he's been actually very strong as of late. I can actually pull the number right now. Hold on. Uh, over well, the last. Well, since we have to, since we have to fill six, all we're going to do is do four, two, 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 two right. Um, yeah which is interesting, gives you lots of options if you're saying Edmonton is your team. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think – and, like, I mean, Nuja Hopkins is still there. Um, oh, he took advantage. Ed. Did he take Kreider, too? Oh, my God. Yeah, he went just full on. This is interesting. This is like a stream draft to yeah. a T where everyone's kind of staying in their lane almost a little yeah. early. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm surprised. I don't, I don't think it's a big deal though. Again, like this is a good t time to do the moods, you know, four, two, two. Yeah. I, I don't think there's really a problem with taking Toronto here. Like you could take Marner. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to get a full four with Toronto though. Uh, man, this is actually. <laughs> it's a battle could, right now. I would, I wouldn't mind it, I guess. I mean, you're going to get a ton of points out of it. I, I think it's probably fine, honestly. I think you could do this. I mean, you're going to get a, a really – but it's a 0% of getting Matthews and McDavid. That's never going to happen. So you're probably actually getting pretty unique with Toronto. Um, yeah, wow. I think – what? where's Jade? Yeah. Who is next in ADP? Is it really Hellebuck? You could take Nuge here, though, and just finish. Yeah. We'll do it. Uh, you got a little bug. It's anyway. not easy. I don't think – I mean, Nuge isn't even all that necessary, but you could just finish the fourth, um, and then this is going to be a battle. I mean, I think this could end up just being one where you overstack Edmonton is kind mm -hmm. of my thought is the pivot here. But we'll see what happens. I mean, Nuge isn't even that necessary. Well, what's happened here, and we love when people stay in their lane – but because people are staying in their lane, they've pushed up their stacks. Like we thought we were going to be able to get some level of like two players from I can't believe the, we took both the Rangers and then right, right up the board. Um, yeah. 
It's wow. an interesting battle for my first draft <laughs> to come out. And... I, yeah, I, I'm just shocked that everything kind of fell this way. We probably, honestly, but maybe we should have done is just got an ultra unique. I can't, someone just took Sam. So I, you don't need another goalie. You're done with goalies. Um, but man, mm-hmm. it's it's really becoming quite a battle. I mean, Winnipeg is going to be free. I, again, I, I, I've been preaching this and I don't think I've done it yet. You could realistically build a pretty strong Western Conference final team and just say that the East is a sweep. And then you're going to advance a team that's going to be probably very unique. Um, I don't know. That I don't, is interesting. Or, or, I mean, if the cup is a sweep too, like that was kind of what we dealt with and why I didn't like, I mean, last year I was probably not winning anyways, but the big problem I had is all of my Florida died because they almost got swept. They were basically, you know, pretty useless comparatively. So anyone that had Vegas was just lapping me. Um, I came back a little bit with a Florida win, but, you know, if Edmonton sweeps and you are over the field on the West, it's really not that big of a deal because you're probably going to get in a team that, like I'm saying, could be unique. Yeah. I mean, I probably grabbed Nuge here as long as this, I mean, this guy probably can't imagine takes Nuge. Um, I say, yeah, I mean, definitely Nuge. And then Honestly, I mean, I'd probably just take Kyle Connor or Morgan Riley, but I'd probably take Connor because you really need to start building out the depth. But I mean, this team—that's what I was thinking. Cool. I think, I mean, I think the number one thing about this team is the upside is unbelievable with Marner, Hyman, McDavid, Bouchard, Fox, two very strong goalies. Like the upside still is really good for the correlation being a little bit fringe. Yeah, I think you just build out the West. Yeah, that this is our this is our Western Conference Finals. That a team like that, these two teams are going to be almost impossible to kind of to handle, right? Yeah, I and I just I just think about like again, just thinking rationally. How many people are going with Edmonton and Winnipeg? It's probably already getting very low, right? I mean, just thinking like how many teams are going to exist? How many teams are going to stack a little bit extra on top of those two? I mean, I think it's going to be you know one percent maybe mm-hmm. like it's going to be super duper low just because i mean i i think there's just an east coast bias which is what we see in a lot of these lobbies like there's more teams in the east getting drafted than there are teams in the west i think that just is a thing in these windows in these lobbies too like vancouver and winnipeg two teams that have the same odds as like boston slip much much further um mm. because people don't watch them you know they, they're not watching these teams they just don't care about them and um i think it's I think it's probably the thing that, you know, and if Winnipeg gets swept by Colorado, who's going to be surprised? But there's – look at the pull-up the odds right now. It was minus 135 Colorado wins the series. That's not much. I mean, that is not much. Mm-hmm. Colorado, Winnipeg is 100% locked in. Winnipeg should be the home team. It's pretty close to a pickup. So I don't think there's any reason to not be a little bit bullish on these Jets who just absolutely slap them at home in a Colorado – wins and they get home ice advantage and Winnipeg went in there and beat them down to a pulp. So, I mean, the only problem with taking Riley at this point is, yeah, I think, I think like, I, I just don't know if you need another defenseman anytime too soon is the thing. I think that La, uh, Lafreniere and I mean, you need a wing. That's kind of the problem. I mean, Evander Kane is, it's just tough. He's just not going to get power play run. The only thing about it, if you click on his pay, like click on his uh, stats, I mean, he does everything. Mm-hmm. Like he, he has a huge floor. I mean, my consciousness I, is like finals teams, right? So we need yeah. six players in the finals. We have one, two, three, four, five from Edmonton. Yeah. If we get Kane, that'll put us in a guaranteed. Right now, if they play Rangers, we're, we're live. Do they play Toronto? We're live. So yeah, we have three more picks. I mean, you have to add a wing, I think, no matter what. So yeah, I think Lafreniere has to be the guy. And then I think it's up What's to you. Like, I mean, yeah, that gives us like a, a pretty live New York here. Um, I I think it's Defoli or Kane. I think that's the debate. Is Defoli or Kane? Mm-hmm. Because. Toffoli, I think, has more upside, but again, you're not getting it to the cup. But I mean, you're you're giving yourself two different outs for another winger in the cup. I kind of like yeah, that. I think it's because I, yeah, yeah. Let's go Shifley we'll just go because Shifley. yeah, that's fine. And then we'll, we'll Shifley. I mean, it doesn't matter. And then we go to Foley for the next one. 
Well, it's the last one. So to, to bully or more, see, it doesn't. Yeah, with our last one, right? Yeah, I think it's yeah. I think this is. I honestly think this came out a lot better than what when when I when we started this. And I think it's. But again, like not many people are doing this, and I think that you're getting super unique here. But the upside, Kyle Connor's a 50 goal scorer. You know, if he stays healthy, healthy. Hyman, 50 goal scorer this freaking year with McDavid passing him the puck. McDavid, an alien. Bouchard, 80 point defenseman. Fox, you know, 70, 80 point defenseman. Marner, 100 point play. Like the amount of guys you got that are just unbelievable upside pieces, none of them that could possibly face until the conference finals. Like that, that's, that's the hard part to do. I think the only issue with this team is the upside is zero if Edmonton doesn't make the finals, but, <laughs> you, have, but you have to get there. And in reality, you have two teams, preferably, I guess, the Rangers, but even if it is Toronto, you get, you know, a, a full Edmonton with Marner and no one's going to have McDavid and, and Matthews, so 0% of people. Um, so I think Toronto Edmonton, I mean, I've actually done it a couple times where I've done Toronto Edmonton without Matthews or without McDavid, one or the other, because I, again, I think it's just, people don't want to do it. Like people don't want to take Toronto Edmonton. They're like, those are loser teams that aren't going to win. And I'm like, okay, well, so was Washington until they won. Mm -hmm. So was Tampa until they won three. Like those are teams that couldn't win until they did. So eventually McDavid's going to go on a cup run. Like why not get ahead of the curve? Um, So yeah, for sure. I mean, it, I do think this is like one of those teams that it feels uncomfortable, and that's probably a good thing. So we have so, one more pick. Yeah. We've got to wrap this thing up. Um, where do you think we should go? Do you think we should fill, fill out the Jets? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it's probably just Morrissey. I think he has a, a metric ton of upside. I, God, it's so hard to say, but I, I would go Morrissey. Like, the flex is wide open, and – if Winnipeg is that good, it's probably Josh Morrissey. Honestly, that's like because he does everything. He shoots, he blocks, he hits. Like I think if, if Winnipeg is getting that run, I think that's the that, that could be the skeleton key of this team. But it's a I mean it's a Western Conference team, and this is something me and Matt, like I said, we talked about it a bunch, and we're just like, I just haven't had the I haven't had the nerve. Mm-hmm. It's it. So this is an interesting roster. So we went. Edmonton, 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 Edmonton off the top. Then we got uh, New York Ranger, Toronto. Um, and then we started to hit the Jets a little bit late, later. So this is interesting. So we got five Edmonton. Yeah. Um, we got Four. one Toronto. Wow. We got two New York, and we got four Jets. So uh, I mean, but again, if if the Jets make the if the Jets make the cup too, though, like in reality, like you're fine because no one is taking four Jets. Like four Jets is already going to be rare. Like people are mainly just mini stacking them at the end. Um, but you could realistically win this if the Jets or obviously the Oilers make it, if you make it to the finals, and then you're getting one more piece on the other end. You're still filling out a roster, right? I mean, center, D, so six, wing. Right. So I get a full roster of New York, uh, the, the yeah. Jets Rangers finals. I'm live. Jets, Rangers, Very yeah, Jets live. Rangers, live. Yeah. Jets, um, Maple Leafs finals. I have, I'm losing one, and that team probably is going to get beat up. By, um, by unless, if Winni- unless if Winnipeg were to sweep, which again, if that, that's probably could, pretty crazy. But yeah, you're probably, you're probably not winning. I mean, I think if Winnipeg were to win the cup against the Rangers, that is could be the most live team just with how much points you would have accumulated with McDavid as long as he's moving. Like, like, but again, like what are the odds of that happening? Well, what are the odds of any cup final happening? Like mm-hmm. try to pick the two chalkiest teams to win the cup. It's still like 20 to one. You know what I mean? Like it, it's super difficult. Um, I do like this though, because there is like a, look at this number two drafter. I think, very highly stacked team, literally two two teams, Carolina and Colorado. But if you think that that's the case, isn't it just as good to bet that exact matchup for the finals? <laughs> I wonder what those odds are. Um, so I think that building your for a one specific finals, sure that's okay, but you're not going to be able to play all these guys. So mm-hmm. there, I really like the idea of having multiple like outs or different ways to get there. Yeah, um, I mean. Yeah, I, I think I think going too far is you, like you're just not advancing at a high enough clip. Mm-hmm. Like it, like again, if you're drafting one team, I guess whatever. But like, 
if you're drafting a bunch and you're only taking two every time, you're just not going to, your advancing rates are going to be just horrific. And you might not even get a team to the finals. Like I think you're giving yourself incredibly few outs. And then, and then again, like I'm bolder than Matt on this stuff. Like Matt is like four, four, two, two through and through multiple outs, multiple ways to win. And I'm like, well, I think I beat you in the finals though. Like I'm doing more five man stacks and then, you know, five, three, two, two, five, four, two, one, whatever. Um, I think that's the way to do it. Like your construction isn't as important as getting a good Western Eastern conference final matchup uh, with like a good, a couple different outs to win. Yeah, for sure. Um, th this is definitely an interesting draft, a lot to process from doing it for my first one. I'll be in the streets um, a lot more coming up. Okay. Well, DJ, thank you so much for joining today. It was awesome. Um, going to be doing a lot more of this this upcoming yeah. fall when i'm going to be getting ready for like the season long tournaments um really excited about that we'll definitely have to do a little bit of uh your show and my show kind of stuff drafting yeah anytime yeah i mean we have until saturday for these and i'm gonna probably do at least 70 more uh just gonna do my absolute best to jam tomorrow we'll be on with pete and john from badge bros at noon so more drafting there, a uh, little more games, a little more, a little more clownery, uh, because <laughs> I think Pete, Pete's just doing it for fun. It was funny because I was watching Best Ball Breakfast, and then he was like, "Yeah, stuff coming up." Talking about, I'm like, mentioned the hockey. He never did. And I'm like, ah, he'll he'll be reminded later. Um, but no, we're we're just having fun. I mean, I think this contest is more of just like have fun and be unique and get creative and just stick to like a very basics. Where like the season long is, I'm. A, a lot more rigid like each draft is is like you know very much i feel like like a like a down to a science these on it's more art than science like it's I, which is why i like it though like it's more fun to draft it like i think these are way more fun than the regular season but like i think the regular season's more exploitable um i think in the regular season like, you yeah. could very realistically um auto draft with some rules around like roster construction yep. and like have some pretty good rankings and do okay in these if you auto drafted you're in for a world of hurt um yeah i don't know so how you then, i mean like you could like bricks caddy could probably do it if brick wanted to do it but like i just don't think he, he cares but i think he could build something that would like force teams in and force correlations that could work in theory i, I mean I, I again at the end of the day i think the number one rule you know i mean i, I just thought of it it's like think like a computer and remove your biases like you have like that, that is how you win this contest. Like last year, the guy that won it went Vegas and Florida. And you want to tell me anybody would have told you that is a smart bet. Like Florida's going to beat the Boston Bruins, the best team in NHL history. And then they're going to go to the cup and they're going to play Vegas who doesn't have a goalie. We just don't know who that is. Uh, they've been injured all year. I know guys are coming back, but no one's been playing together. Like, no, like, I mean, again, like neither of those teams were even close to the chalk. Like, Vegas, at least with maybe like within your top four or five teams, maybe Florida was the last team in Buffalo almost beat them to get in like that level of bad. Mm -hmm. Like, like you just have to think like a computer, like don't get bogged down in this media nonsense about like, Oh, the Bristol bets in Dallas aren't going to go down. Oh, I can't imagine the Rangers could lose. Oh yeah. Notorious winners. Like just shut up and turn it off. Don't listen to anyone else and draft like a computer. And I bet you'll, you'll, you know, galaxy brain yourself into teams that can win. As long as you're again, drafting teams that have a chance, six guys in the finals, you know, the four, four, two, two, you know, stuff like that. Like that, that, that is, I found it. I got there right at the end. Yeah. A little bit of creativity, but follow the rules and just like, yeah, have a whole a portfolio of everything. If you can. Yeah. You it's can. like, yeah, I don't even know. I feel like I said two completely different things. I'm like, don't be like, be an artist. And now I'm like, don't be, no, like, be an artist that, that like, pretend like you know nothing. <laughs> like, it's yeah, so it's like, hard to like get to, like, yeah, I feel like it's like, don't try to be the smartest person in the room that knows the most hockey because you're going to lose to just some schmuck that knows nothing, like, because they don't care and they're just drafting like freaking, you know, Nashville. And they're just having fun and they're vibing. And then Nashville goes on a God run and you're just sitting there like, I knew more than them. And then you'll collect your Skolansky bucks and you'll, you'll go cry like me. Uh, and yeah. I think Chip in the, uh, yeah. to conclude Chip in the um, chat said it perfect, perfectly. Anything can happen. 
nothing matters. Nothing Playoff matters. Best ball is God's game. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, mic drop. Well, thanks, everyone, who joined today. Follow DJ on Twitter and all of the places. Um, follow me on Twitter and all of the various different places. And we'll definitely be doing this again soon. Yeah. Uh, talk to you soon and enjoy the best ball treats and DM me with any questions. If anyone has anything, I'm always open. So let me know.